All right. Good morning. How's everybody doing on this Tuesday? Just going to do a quick refresher just to make sure that it's popping up uh, correctly on YouTube. But this is Paint with Lovejoy, our daily demo. And we're doing a viewer request. This was a modern art request for, um, they actually didn't uh, request a specific modern artist, but I chose Mondrian because uh, we've been talking about primary colors and he is one of my favorite uh, modern art painters. So again, this is Paint with Lovejoy and a little bit of what you're looking at on the screen. We do have our outline already here and at the end of the demo I'll upload this to my website and you can download it or purchase download and then with carbon paper you can transfer it to your canvas if you do not want to do that um, you can pause the video draw what you see and I do recommend using a ruler to get your straight lines and then pick up the video again when we start painting um, I will be using a knife just because I want to put my own version on it Mondrian actually used a brush and he did use a lot of the square tipped brushes, the flat edge brushes. So that way he could use the perimeter, the edge of the brush to create some of those crisp lines. Um, I know he also would use masking tape to mask off certain areas, but we're going to do kind of quick with this. And like I said, I'll be scraping on with the palette knife and I will be putting white on white canvas in a few areas, but we've got yellow actually just have one yellow blue 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 red and red um, oop, another yellow over here I forgot about that so we will be doing my style palette knife um, where it's gonna be the scraping but if you're using a brush at home feel free to use that and you can also use other tools like if you don't have paint at home but you have crayons or markers or colored pencils use that um, you don't have to have all the cool, awesome, expensive tools. Use what you have, and that just makes it even more creative when you're utilizing the tools that you have or what you have on hand. All right, so I am taking the yellow. We're going to start with our light color first. We'll start with yellow, then we'll do blue, then we'll move over to the red. Then I will actually go in with white and fill in white in the few areas. Because I'm using a uh, regessoed canvas, I will be putting white in a white area. If you're using a brand new canvas, um, you could actually skip the part where I'm putting white paint on. So totally your call. Now with my style knife scraping, um, mine's untraditional. Normal traditional palette knife is kind of putting it on really thick and then using light pressure and kind of manipulating it on top of it. So if you are using the knife today, you can do either the really thick impasto or you can do kind of the scraping method that I'll be doing. And it is nice with the knives, so that way I can kind of use that edge, come right up next to it, and then pull my knife away from it. So it will help get some of these crisp, clean lines on here. Um, and at the very end, we will use black paint and fill in this nice grid border area. And that, um, we may use a brush or I may stick with the knife. We'll decide that a little bit later. So as you are applying with the knife, do apply your paint maybe a little thicker than some of my other scraping method, um, just so that way you can get comfortable with a little bit thicker paint and how you're holding the knife and applying it. Now, as we paint today, I will keep my canvas in the same position since I am filming. But at home, if you want, turn your canvas sideways, turn it upside down, put it on your lap, but you can put it in any orientation that you need to be able to paint. So don't feel like you have to do everything that I do or do it exactly like I do. Um, just use these videos as a guide and take it in your own direction. All right, so here I am and a few places I did overlap. I'm gonna go back with a clean knife and scrape that off. Um, and Mondrian was very particular about very smooth colors um, on his paintings. I will not be recreating that. I do like a lot of this texture and because I'm already working on a textured canvas, I'm just gonna kind of enhance that. All right, so let's see. Oh, nice. Hi, Jen and Anita and Janet. Awesome, awesome. Thank you ladies for joining me this morning. 
All right, so again, I'm just gonna kind of fill in a few little areas. And then we've got yellow in one other little corner here. And we're gonna do the same application on each of these squares. So and if you have any questions, please just leave a comment in the chat. And I try to look over about every couple, every minute or so, just to see if there's a new question. But let me know. And hopefully everybody's having a nice day. So that part that I want to scrape off, I'm actually going to go back to a clean knife and with pressure, just going to scrape that off. We will be putting black paint on that area. So again, with acrylic paint, don't feel like you have to be absolutely perfect. Um, I like with acrylic paint, if you paint something that you don't like, you just let it dry and then paint on top of it with a new layer or a new color. So for my beginner painters, and I teach pretty much first time and beginner painters, acrylic paint is a really nice medium to work with because you have a lot of forgiveness with it. All right, again, I think this is our last spot for yellow. If you are painting on a stretched canvas, I do recommend that when you kind of come to the edge, carry that over and do all the yellow here on the side. And then when you get to your blue or your white, um, it just looks really nice having that color or that image wrap around the side of the canvas. And as we're painting either a little thicker or a little bit thinner with the scraping, just kind of mind the pressure um, of your control with either the knife or the brush. Remember to breathe. It is not beneficial to hold your breath, especially when you're painting ever really, but especially when you're painting. So now moving into the blue, and again, just using that edge of that knife to be able to create that kind of crisp line. And I have a feeling since this paint's going to be pretty wet by the time I do get to doing the black, I will likely use the brush. But again, I may decide, may change my mind, or maybe I'll try both and see which one feels better. And when you're painting at home, don't feel like you have to stick with the exact um, objective that you wanted to accomplish when you first started painting or when you sit down to paint for that day. Sometimes things change, sometimes things happen and you do have to adjust. That is part of life and that's definitely part of art. Um, so don't be afraid to adapt as needed. They're actually good life skills when you learn to adapt. Um, and we're all learning to kind of change directions right now and try new ways of socializing, new ways of working. So we are very adaptable human beings. All right. And again, I'm applying this a little thicker than usual. We're gonna put blue here and then we have red and red and then super exciting putting white in the rest of the spaces. Um, I just find it highly amusing putting white on a white canvas. And um, there are some artists, modern artists, abstract artists, that all they do is paint white on a white canvas and they sell for crazy amounts of money. Um, even being in the art world, it's nothing I've ever fully understood. Um, I appreciate a lot of abstract art, but some of it I don't get and some of it is more conceptual to where I appreciate the story behind the art, but not the actual artwork. So that's just part of life, All right? And again, if you're painting on that edge and you've got the stretched canvas, just carry that color over the tops, the sides and the bottom. And even though this is a Mondrian painting, um, if you feel like switching out colors, if you wanna do blues and teals or whatever you want, it will still have the Mondrian feeling um, but might match your decor a little bit better. So don't be afraid to switch it up and make this your own. All right, so I think, let's see, we've got red and red, and then we get to do exciting white on white. And I do, it is really nice to be able to kind of create a painting with primary colors. And our primary colors are our base colors that we make everything else out of, um, aside from black and white. But our primary colors are yellow, red, and blue. Your secondary colors would be a mixture of the two to create the secondary colors. So yellow and blue make green, red and blue make purple, and uh, what is it? Yellow and red make orange. 
And then from there, you can mix in between those colors called um, your in-between colors and you can make a color wheel. And I did just release a color wheel demonstration on my YouTube channel yesterday. Um, so feel free to check that out and just kind of either bookmark it, but keep it as your library on how colors relate. Um, on my main Paint with Lovejoy website, I also released a color mixing library for my first time painters. And it goes through the full color wheel. And then it also goes through tints and shades and what it looks like to mix white with red or black with red. Um, and it just goes through all the colors. So for my first time and beginner painters, it's a nice library that you can have and look back on um, as you get more into your painting groove, more as you mix colors and you're not sure what something looks like. Um, I'm developing libraries to help you do that. And it is just a flat fee, but you have lifetime access to it. But jump on over, paint with Lovejoy. You can check that out. You can check out all the other little bundles in my Paint Your Pet class. And I do have an intro to my style knife scraping. Basically, I just want you guys getting more and more creative as often as possible. All right, so one more. Let's see, we've got a dark one over here. And sometimes even when you're painting something what's considered simple, you know, when I would consider this a very simple color scheme with our primary colors, even if you've been painting for years, going back to the basics and doing some of the simple stuff still has a lot of value. So if you've been painting for a long time, don't turn your nose up at, you know, doing a painting that maybe you feel is beneath you or it's too simple. You can always learn new things. It's kind of like um, yoga. Even if you go take a beginning yoga class, even though you may have been practicing for decades, there's always a way to slow down, go back to the basics, and have a new appreciation for what you're doing. So keep that in mind as you look at some super simple paintings sometimes. All right, so not bad. So going to clean the knife off really good. And if you need to, you can even switch to another knife. I'm going to throw white on pretty much these remaining squares. We've got one, two, three, four, five. And then I'm going to go in with black. And I think I'm going to try to stick with the knife just so we can play with that impasto, that thicker style. All right. So again, super, super exciting. And if you happen to have some, oops, got some extra color on mine. And I'm just going to switch knives. There we go. And there's something nice and just fun. It's almost like icing a cake, just moving this thicker paint. I think if I was working on a larger canvas, I would have done a bit more of the scraping and done a few layers. But it's all right. It's just how it goes for today. And you're getting comfortable with the pressure, whether you're using a knife or a brush. And the more that you paint, the more your muscles are remembering what it feels like to hold the knife. Um, your brain is remembering all the details of what it feels like, what it looks like to mix specific colors. Um, so don't knock the practice. There is a reason that you should practice and paint every day. You can forget skills. They do come back after you start painting again, but you can forget skills. All right, so throw more white on here. All right. And as you're painting this at home, and if you change colors, but whatever you paint, please send me pictures of what you paint. You can email those to me, paintwithlovejoy at gmail.com or tag me in social media. Um, like I've said in quite a few of the other videos, receiving your guys' emails in the morning and seeing what you're painting, um, you know, just makes me really happy while I'm drinking my coffee. And it gives me motivation to keep making these videos too. All right. And now that I'm getting down to the wire um, for the black paint, I may switch to the brush. I don't know. We'll see. It is going to be a little tricky. 
um, just because I do have such thick paint on here and it's not dry. But that's all right, that's part of our deal for today. And I have found in life that you don't really want the perfect situation all the time. Because when you do have some things that mess up, um, there are opportunities for you to try to do something you've done a lot in a new way, in a new direction, from a new perspective. So even when things are difficult, there's always stuff that you can learn from it. Okay. So let's see. I'm going to actually start with the brush and then maybe we'll move to the knife or... Actually, I think this one for the knife will actually work better. So maybe we'll start with that. All right, so again, just kind of getting it really thick. And it's more of a placing rather than a pushing and smushing in because I don't want this mixing with my primary colors. I do want the black to stay pretty solid. And if you are using a different knife or a brush um, at home, I do recommend that you let your paint dry before you move into this step or just go really slow, kind of like I'm doing right now. Just go really slow and you're placing the paint on there kind of thick. And you're not thinking about the rest of the world. You're not thinking about drama or politics, even though I'm mentioning them right now. But the point of painting is more about the process, the physical aspect of painting rather than your final um, creation because no matter what you paint it's awesome that you just do it but your final creation the act of creating means that you're learning something new so when you go to paint again even if it's the exact same image you're a new person at that date and you have um, different information in your head based on either doing it prior or your life experience so creativity is so much about the actual process of painting. And your soul needs the process of painting to relax, to just chill out. All right, so as I'm applying this, I am literally just kind of grabbing thick paint. I don't even think I'm touching the canvas with the knife. All right, so let's see, we've got a few questions. Awesome, hi Tammy, thanks for joining. Yes, Anita, if you use a brush, so the question is, um, is the knife easier than the brush? I personally think the knife is easier for me, but I have a sloppy style, um, and that's kind of why I like the knife. So really, it doesn't matter if you're using the knife or if one person thinks one tool is easier. You have to find what works for you. So I'd say try both. Try the knife. Try the brush. Maybe you end up doing a combo of both, but you're at least giving yourself the opportunity to experience and see if you like it or not. And I highly recommend all my students um, take a class, take classes from a variety of instructors. You know, I may explain something one way, another instructor may explain the exact same thing, but in a different way, and it makes more sense to you. So one person does not have all the answers. And Sometimes hearing the same thing from a variety of teachers or a variety of people um, helps it make more sense to you. So bottom line, find what works for you and don't be afraid to kind of step outside your comfort zone and try something new. And all of you that are painting at home, I'm very proud of you because you are stepping outside your comfort zone. Um, you're doing something that's a little scary and I do hope and it does seem like it from the emails that I'm getting that you are finding your um, your own evolution. You're finding your places where you're growing, you're learning new skills. And that's the fun part about learning. There's always something new to learn. All right. So not too bad with the knife. All right. Oh, let's see. Other question is how long does it take to forget skills? You haven't painted in four weeks. Um, I would say painting and stuff that you enjoy is kind of like riding a bike that once you get back into it, there may be a few like awkward moments, but your muscles will remember to a certain degree. So 
So I'd have to say it's going to be a pretty long time before you fully forget. But our brains are pretty powerful and they store a lot of information. So I think if you even fully forget, um, once you start doing it again, it opens up the memories in your brain and you start, it starts kind of coming back. I don't know. I'll leave it to all the science people for the brain work. But our brains are super, super fascinating. And the mind over matter, I am enthralled by. I just find it so cool. Our brains are so powerful. And I've always liked the concept of, you know, need to change your world, change your perspective. And that literally changes your world. Okay. I'm actually kind of liking how this is turning out. Let me throw some more black paint on there. I was actually trying to think of what's the longest time frame I've gone without painting. And I think I've gone probably three months. Um, and I was traveling a lot during then. So I think I still did a few watercolors, but I wasn't painting the way that I normally had been. And even when I did Australia for, um, what was it, five weeks? Uh, the end of 2018. Yeah. Um, I still did watercolors, but being out of the studio and out of my normal comfort zone and normal go to areas uh, was a little different and it felt nice to go back and paint. For me, painting in my studio, it's kind of like coming home. It's my space to where my soul gets to just relax, expand and be one with itself. <laughs> Hopefully you guys are finding something similar as you are creating and exploring your um, creative output. All right, whoops, I got a little bit into the black or a little bit into the yellow. It's all right, but overall this is going pretty well. And I do recommend that you guys just Google Mondrian, check out his paintings. They are nice ones to work from, and they are very simple and very geometric. Um, every time I look at them, um, especially ones that have the smaller squares and stuff, I feel like I'm looking at uh, traffic or a cityscape or a map um, from a bird's eye view. So feel free, research different artists, find what you like about them, incorporate it into your style. Um, and just expand your skills. I, I think I told somebody almost over a year ago, and they keep bringing it up to me, that I said, as soon as you stop learning, that's when you start growing old and start dying. So constantly keep your brain going. There's always more things that we can learn. And we're never, ever too old to learn new things. All right. So this actually turned out to be, oh, no, not too bad. I think we're at about 22 minutes, it looks like. I had a feeling this might go a little quicker. Um, but feel free, like I said, if you're doing this at home, you can use different knives, different brushes. If you are using crayons or colored pencils, you could put acrylic paint on top of it for the black. But just have fun. Get creative. So if you haven't liked this video, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. I will continue doing these daily demos. Um, they're great for me. I really, really appreciate the consistency in painting every morning and having a bit of an audience. Um, but if there's something you want me to paint in the future, please let me know. Leave a comment. And if you go to my main YouTube page and scroll down, you will see all the future paintings that I'll be doing for the demo. Um, and if you did make a recommendation and it's not on there, please just remind me. I am a solo show doing all of this on my own. Um, and I do tend to forget things. I'm fairly organized for an artist, um, but that's not saying a whole lot. So, like I said, feel free, check out my other videos. Yes, you can use pastels. Um, and I think maybe into next month, I will start uh, maybe doing a few of these in colored pencils. I do have some watercolor ones I wanna share with you guys. Um, and maybe I'll start doing some pastels and getting out other materials for these demos, so thanks. 
Um, all right, I think that takes care of it. We did finish a little early this morning. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me and I will see everybody tomorrow. Take care. Cheers.